It's that time of year when paddocks across Britain are filled with the scenic image of lambs bounding merrily in the grass. But farmers are increasingly reporting that their springtime offspring are being stolen. Police believe by organised criminal gangs resorting to animal rustling because of increased meat prices during the recession. In the West Midlands, six men have been arrested after police stopped two cars on the motorway and found 16 lambs crammed inside. As our Midlands correspondent, Darshan Sony, now reports. He's here. Come on. It's lambing season, and these little ones were born just yesterday. But George Whittington has to keep a close eye on his stock. In recent times, hundreds of animals have been stolen from his fields. They're now worth so much money, you know. They're worth so much money, and that's... that's I mean, one day, that, that sheep, that lamb there, um, in its lifetime, at this time of year, will be worth in, in excess of £100. Where, whereas... Um, five years ago, 50 to 60 pounds. In fact, there's been a five-fold increase in sheep rustling this year already, according to the National Farmers Union. And is it easy to sell? There's always somebody who'll buy something cheap, isn't there? <laughs> you know, there's, all, there's always somebody in the pub with a carrier bag full of meat for 10 pounds, and that's it. It's not just sheep that are being targeted. I've spoken to local farmers who have had pigs and even bees stolen. Fuel has been siphoned off and expensive equipment like tractors have been taken. During the recession overall, rural crime has risen sharply and it's partly being blamed on the rising cost of meat. Over the last three years, the average cost of fresh chicken has gone up by nearly 40%. Beef burgers are up by 36% and a whole leg of lamb has shot up by almost half. Earlier today, six people were arrested after these 16 lambs were found crammed into the boot of two cars stopped by police on the M5 motorway. The animals have now been reunited with their owner. Some farmers have resorted to desperate measures. This family in Dartmoor dyed their sheep orange to deter thieves. Many of the stolen sheep end up in unlicensed abattoirs. They're slaughtered and sold without the normal health checks. But that isn't enough to deter shoppers in search of a bargain. And many farmers are frustrated that the crime isn't taken seriously. They thought, oh, it's only a couple of sheep, don't matter about that. You know, what's a couple of sheep? Well, a couple of sheep is our livelihood. If at the end of the year, you know, uh, if we have 20 pinched in a year at £100 a piece, it's 2,000 quid. You know, well, that's £2,000 that we haven't got. Darshna Sonny, Channel 4 News, Nottinghamshire. In Britain, the poor tend to merge into the background nowadays, but this group tried to take their grievances direct to the man who runs the country's finances. Delivering a petition organised by Save the Children, a charity better known for its work in the developing world, they're trying to get the government to tackle the problems which they say are crippling their children's early years and their ambitions. If you like any other child, she wants to play, she wants to sing, she wants to dance. I mean, she doesn't necessarily want to be a star, but... I do. She just wants to be, enjoy, enjoy life, and, you know, have a bit of fun, but she misses out and be on those opportunities. The ice cream van comes round, don't you, and can I have an ice cream? No, you've even got to the stage of saying, I know, as soon as he has the van, I know, I said, well, well done. The phenomenon of child poverty isn't only in poor places, it is Islington one of the best addresses in London, full of the trappings of elegant cafe society. But these historic terraces sit right next to estates which house the poor. In Britain, children are defined as living in poverty when their parents have $15 a day to live on or less. In places as expensive as this, people here are priced out of their own neighbourhood. London's famous for being one of the most expensive cities in the world, but it's less well known that four out of ten children in the capital city here live in poverty. And in places like this, it really borders on the obscene. Islington, this borough in North London, is one of the most expensive places in London to live. And it has also got one of the highest rates of child deprivation in the whole of the country. Some of these are million-pound houses, aren't they? Yeah, if you carry on down this street, you will find millionaire households. In an era of cuts to government spending and services for the least well-off, campaigners say a new problem is emerging, not just poverty relative to the rich. Absolute poverty is returning to London. If you've got £10 to spend on each of your children, it buys you less food. Um, it, 
pays for less heating makes it harder to keep the home warm. It, the bus fares get more expensive. Everything's getting more expensive, but you, you have no more money than before. So therefore, in absolute terms, you're becoming worse off. The rich in places like Islington may well agree with the political narrative here, which calls for measures to appease the financial markets by reducing deficits. If that means many millions of parents can't afford to buy enough food for their children to eat, it would seem to fall under what the government would call a difficult but necessary decision. Lawrence Lee, Al Jazeera. Hello everyone, welcome to Global Government News. Today is Thursday, April 21st, 2011, and I'm Darko. This is my website, www.ggnonline.com. That's ggnonline.com. I just posted a new poll, and it is, do you think gasoline prices will exceed the $5 mark this year? Of course, if you're in another country, you can convert that to pounds or yen or whatever else. Um, I'm the first one that voted, and I voted yes and maybe, so... And it's uh, not based off uh, any kind of fantasy world. It's based off articles and hard news that I've been covering over the past um, six months or so. Uh, this is a news archive over here. You can find all my news articles to the right. If you want to uh, get an email update on when I post my videos, you can enter your email address here and subscribe via FeedBurner. And if you have an account on uh, Google, a blogger account, you can go here and follow me on here. Uh, hit, hit that little button there and if you have a Facebook account which I think just about everybody does nowadays you can go all the way down here um, and every day it seems I'm getting another follower another follower and I just started this you can uh, click on that button follow me on Facebook so I'm gonna move up here and we're gonna continue here with the economy and we have uh, stocks commodities rises earnings top estimates euro Swiss franc gain and like we said uh, actually George Soros said and uh, I reported on that. Uh, basically, he was saying that the new reserve currency is the euro and the Swiss franc, not the U.S. dollar. Stocks rose with the Dow Industrial Average climbing to an almost three-year high as better than estimated earnings boosted confidence in the global economy. Commodities rallied for a third day, and the euro strengthened to a 16-month high against the dollar. And again, a little follow-up news. Stocks hold ground. U.S. stocks edge higher as a round of robust earnings reports overshadowed lackluster U.S. economic data towards the end of the holiday shortened weekend. And then next up, we have China stocks closed mixed and amid liquidity concerns. Sorry, Chinese shares closed mixed on Wednesday amid concerns that the central bank will continue to soak up excess liquidity. Then moving on to dollar news, the dollar tumbles broadly, all-time index low in sight. The dollar fell broadly for a third straight day on Thursday as record low interest rates and the crushing weight of the U.S. budget deficit pushed it closer to an all-time trough against major currencies. And uh, goes on there and talking about uh, the U.S. Uh, being slapped with a negative outlook on the uh, AAA credit rating uh, then we're going to move on. Chinese yuan advances against the U.S. dollar on Thursday. The Chinese uh, currency renminbi, or the yuan, on Thursday gained 66 basis points from Wednesday to 6.52 per U.S. dollar. Then Australia, no end in sight for dollar's dream run. Says the red-hot Aussie dollar is powering towards uh, U.S. $1.10 and is tipped to climb as high as uh, $1.12 in coming months. Gold. Gold uh, says here, gold hits record for fifth session. Dollar slides. Gold prices rallied to record highs on Thursday for a fifth straight session, and silver soared as the dollar index tumbled for a third day, prompting investors to buy bullion as a currency hedge. And gold to rise to $1,700 in 2015. 2015, where the hell did they get that? Uh, maybe a lot sooner than that. Come on, people. It says a Reuters poll. And it says gold's decade-long bull run could continue in the next four years, uh, though at a slower pace with positive inflation risk partially cooled by a shift towards more normal economic conditions. Hmm. Then uh, it says here, gold as prices rise, teeth come out. It says gold prices are so high now, over $1,500 an ounce, that consumers are cashing in anything they've got that has gold in it, including teeth, bridges, crowns, and other dental work. And that's no joke. It says here, Brent seesaws. After a rally, U.S. oil uh, up on down 
dollar. Man, that's hard to say really quick. Brent oil futures seesaw near un, uh, unchanged after slipping off a 32-month high Thursday as traders took some money out of recently rising energy markets before a holiday weekend. Again, with the holiday weekend, oil and food price rises, part of a scam? Well, I think so, but so it's here the global economy and its recovery and the living standards of millions of plain folks are now at risk from the sudden rise in oil and commodity prices. Gas at the pump is up and going higher. Food prices are following. The consequences are catastrophic for the global poor as their costs go up while their income doesn't. It's a menacing uh, American workers, too, who in large part have not seen a meaningful rise since the days of Reagan. And uh, we're going to try to prove this. Uh, FERC finds Brian Hunter $30 million from manipulating gas markets. This is just April 21st, so it's just news. U.S. Federal uh, Energy Regulatory Commission find Brian Hunter find him, hmm, then jail him, a natural gas trader who gained notoriety for causing the collapse of the hedge fund. Uh, it says $30 million for his intent to manipulate prices. And then moving on to uh, Iraq, it says uh, secret memos expose link between oil firms and invasion of Iraq. And I think most people understood this, even me as a Marine in 2000 and uh, what was it, 2001. When I was over in uh, Japan on just a routine deployment, uh, I was, you know, I was talking to my staff sergeant. I actually held a little meeting uh, uh, during the little um, uh, changeover at, you know, at the end of the day between uh, day crew and night crew. And I had my staff sergeant and junior marines there, and I was like breaking down, showing uh, information on how, uh, you know, the whole reason we were going to Iraq had nothing to do with 9/11. This was in 2001, 2002, uh, saying that it was all for oil. And I was just, you know, I wasn't a conspiracy theorist. I wasn't really into all that much news at the time. I was just putting, you know, A and B together, you know. And that's a big deal, you know. It's like uh, they didn't really like that. Uh, I mean, they let me, my staff sergeant let me hold the, held that meeting. But, uh, you know, that was the last one. <laughs> and uh, here we go. We're going to move on. U.S. government agency plans $2.84 billion loan for oil refinery in Colombia. So U.S. Export-Import Bank, independent agency of the federal government, is now planning a $2.84 billion loan for the massive project to expand and upgrade an oil refinery in uh, Colombia. The money would go to uh, Reficar, a wholly owned subsidiary of uh, EcoPetrol, the Colombian national oil company. So... Check that out. Most, uh, most, if not all, links will be posted unless, like I said, I have technical problems or there's just not enough space. So says here, food crisis used to push GM corn in Mexico. So, you know, you can see these are part of the scams that, I'm, that we we're talking about, right? Natural gas scams, oil scams, uh, building, you know, uh, to U.S. taxpayers build uh, refineries in other countries. Uh, you know, food crisis to push GM food, which is totally bad for you, going to cause you to be sterilized. And, of course, Monsanto is going to be the big winner. And then we move on to this, the uh, 15 most expensive places to buy gas. And the first one is uh, Belgium. Then uh, we have Italy at $7 per gallon, Sweden at $7 per gallon. And uh, it says here, Germany at $7.19, uh, Hong Kong, $7.27, Monaco, UK, $7.27, Finland, $7.30. And then it says France, uh, Denmark, a lot of these Scandinavian countries, but uh, we have Greece, Norway, uh, Netherlands, Turkey at $9.54, and Eritrea. So never even heard of that country but uh moving on here says here officials warn of further inflation risk in china chinese consumer prices may stay high for the rest of the year under rising inflation pressure the country's price officials have warned and then we have china's think tank alerts government on inflation pressure shock rise in retail sales fueled by food purchases retail uh, people got to eat right retail sales rose unexpectedly in march helped by stronger food sales on the month while public sector borrowing for the fiscal year ended in march came below well the prices are going up like mcdonald's they, they even admit their prices are going up due to inflation and their profits are going up just like gm they're raising their prices because their costs are going up so they're you know they're making more profits and um next up we're going to have chinese truckers protest over costs it says here at least 100 of 100 truckers held a protest over rising costs in china's commercial metropolis prompting police response and illustrating the potential for inflation to fuel unrest civil unrest they're talking about and the world's number two economy 
Kenya, Uganda protests as maize prices skyrocket. And it says here, Stephen Omani scratched out the number 55 on the sign advertising buckets of maize and wrote in the new price of 60 Kenya shillings. Food prices are rising across the globe. The World Bank said uh, last week food prices are 36% higher today than a year ago and are pushing people deeper into poverty. And that is, of course, all by design and eventually will come the calling off, right? You can join me in part two. This is GGN, and I'm Darko. Thank you.